Today we're going to be looking at another heavily requested Hacksmith Industries video. Specifically this one on making a lightsaber staff or lightsaber polearm. Now just from a safety standpoint, that might actually be safer in terms of less likely to cause injury to the operator because the hazards bit is further away from you. That being said, you're going to want to be careful about what you come into contact with just by having something with a longer reach. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this one out. This right here is the world's first fully self-contained plasma-based lightsaber pipe. Now I know what you're thinking. It is a little... Is he on a little segue? Or not a segue, those little... I forget what those little wheeled thingies are called, but... Are they gonna... Is he gonna joust with that? Okay, that's not safe. <laughs> you would need a, uh, a hot work permit just to walk with one of those around a nuclear plant. And what would actually be a bigger hazard... So you're less likely to injure yourself, but you're more likely to bump into other components. So you would need safety watches like up in the overhead, behind you, along the sides, someone pointing out where all the like pipes and conduits and whatever you can bump into if you were to strut around with one of these in a nuclear power plant. But hey, the positive side is no bad guy is going to want to mess with you if these nuclear sites are defended with lightsabers. <laughs> Let me show you how we got here and more importantly, where this takes us next. We took everything we learned from our proto sabers and have perfected the design to be fully self-contained. Now that's nice. This is a critical stepping stone. Developing self-contained is huge, and that's a huge bit of um, not only miniaturization, but just a uh, without having to carry a bulky backpack one. If you haven't seen my reaction to that one, I'll pin it down below. That was also a cool design, but this is definitely a step in the right direction. And it's funny, because we actually managed to follow the exact same development cycle as the Star Wars universe. Going from Proto Saber Power Pack to Lightsaber Pike, and in the future, the fully self-contained lightsaber. I <laughs> like the not clumsier as when random as a blaster. This is really cool to follow these guys and just see their gradual developments and improvements throughout the design cycle. Possible? Well, yes. This right here is proof that we're making progress. And later in the video, I'll show you exactly how we plan to get there. Regarding the design, our 3D printed this as a good visual to show you how it works. And there's gonna be 77 components inside of this thing. Cool. Each one of them critical for the lightsaber to function. Basically, the lightsaber pike works by combining few- That's never a, uh, yeah. When you have 77 components and each one is critical to function, thus ne necessitating the uh, procurement of critical spares for each individual one of these, if you're gonna have in order to get this sort of thing to work. That would be the next evolutionary step. Once they get it, the, sh the same sort of design to have more, um, now he said 77 critical components. Now, the, presumably there's a bunch of other components that are non-critical. You could either do without or bypass in the case of, I don't know if he has like separate, you know, fuel lines or what have you, but it's just part of a design is is reducing the number of critical components with designing anything, including a, uh, a nuclear power plant. Now, in the case of nuclear power plants, you have so many backup systems to your critical components that what's interesting is you still say that they're critical, but if something bad were to happen to one of them, you're still safe because you have backups. And oxygen in a controlled manner, igniting the mixture to create a plasma blade, and using the electronics to control its various features. That's so cool. With the design and prototype out of the way, it's time to start fabricating. The oxygen system was next. What sets our lightsaber apart from a long blowtorch is the use <laughs> of pure oxygen. By using okay. pure oxygen for the flame, we can reach temperatures of 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Far that is extremely hot. That's hotter than nuclear fuel. Or to put it another way, if nuclear fuel gets that hot, it's a bad day. Than a blowtorch. But high pressure oxygen can actually be extremely dangerous as it can allow anything to burn. Not just the metal door we're trying to cut, but the whole lightsaber can go up in flames mm. if we don't do this right. So in order to safely store pure oxygen at a high pressure, we partnered with Swage Lock Ontario, who provided us with three double-ended cylinders, cleaned for oxygen service, which should give us about three minutes of runtime. These bottles had to be connected together with the regulator and solenoids on one end and the quick connect on the other. 
in three minutes, so you have to defeat the Sith Lord before you run out, huh? It's still really cool. Out of the way, the batteries can be attached. I created two battery packs that mount around each cylinder joint, which should allow the lightsaber to function for about 30 minutes on a single charge. Since the oxygen bottles and the carbon fiber tubes are conductive, it was extremely important to protect our wires and batteries after we were done soldering. To do this, we used the thin, insulating and heat resistant tape called Capton. Oh, this thing is feeling awesome. Next up, we 3D printed a unique joining piece. This part connects the front stainless steel body tube to our carbon fiber oxygen system and needed to be extremely strong and rigid. To make this, we used our new Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon 3D printer, along with some incredible nylon carbon fiber infused filament. This stuff is way tougher than PLA or even ABS. Oh wow. It was Check important in making sure that our lightsaber pike wouldn't be bendy in the middle. Just like our previous lightsabers, we're using the Glass Torch Technologies Mirage Nozzle to create the laminar flow plasma blade and the same flow regulators that we built for the Kenobi Saber. At this point, we can attach our- For those of you who don't know what laminar flow is, laminar flow is when the fluid moves in parallel layers and kind of a smooth transition along the sides. It's very organized and orderly compared to turbulent, which is chaotic, irregular, and you'll even see some vortices in there. Now why they want laminar flow is just lower energy dissipation, so it has this nice smooth blade thing they want for their lightsaber. Now turbulent flow, that doesn't mean it's bad, you just don't want it in the case of your lightsaber. This turbulent flow is good for heat transfer, so you'll see it in heat exchangers, a lot of torturous paths to maximize surface area, which increases heat transfer, and also gives opportunity for, for turbulent flow to increase the amount of mixing and movement of uh, fluid particles in there. So they're both highly situational, but yeah, you, you would want laminar in, in the case of your lightsaber. Controller to the flow manifold and nozzles. Then a 3D printer bracket could be added to hold our speakers and PCB, which was fabricated by our friends over at JLC PCB. This circuit controls our solenoids, regulator, and sound, and was designed using Altium. The 3D printed pilot light assembly could now get the regulator, nozzle, sparker, and on off switch installed and be mounted onto our fuel assembly. All right, that's our fuel assembly. Let's Interesting hearing they're using the term fuel assembly, because a fuel assembly is what houses the uh, uranium oxide used to uh, the thing that actually causes the fissions in your nuclear power plant. And within the fuel assembly, between the fuel and the cladding is where a lot of the fission products occur. Those are the bits that are hazardous that need to be safely contained and safely cooled lest you cause a release because those those are the actual hazardous materials not so much the uranium that would cause you to get dose if you were exposed to them but it's it's just funny to see them using the term fuel assembly after all the fuel assemblies in a nuclear plant are more or less the same shape you're just stringing a bunch of these together put it into the lightsaber the carbon fiber tube can be attached to our oxygen tanks followed by the stainless steel body tube the bottle heater and the fuel assembly to hold everything together, the decorative brass pieces can be attached. Finally, the button cover and the sliding door can be mounted and our butane cylinder installed. After a bit of code... That is a fully completed lightsaber. <laughs> this thing just is silly. ridiculous. And there we have it. We just managed to cram 11,000 watts or 36,000 BTUs of heat at 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit and over three minutes of runtime. Wow. Into a hand to give you a sense of scale, that's about 10 microwave ovens worth in this lightsaber pole arm heater thingy. Untethered lightsaber pipe. Oh, it's pretty cool for miniaturization. This is so much better than the Proto Saber. With the Proto Saber, all these sparks and all the molten metal was just burning me. And now I actually get to stand like a few feet back. Yeah, that's that's the real thing is this is a better tool because you're further away from the hazardous bit and you don't have that bulky backpack that could get in the way. This one, although it's larger, you would maintain a lot better uh, positive control of the instrument because the other one that it seems like the hazard would be the backpack getting it hung on something and causing a leak in your tank or something like that. Whereas here you can at least see what you're doing. That was awesome. You might be thinking, this honestly might be less practical than having a power pack. 
and you might be right. I but don't actually think so. Is that we're only three steps away I from making this. this into a fully handheld, self-contained lightsaber. Step one is to reduce the oxygen system. Mm -hmm. Currently, the oxygen storage takes up half of the length of the lightsaber pipe. So if That's the way a lot of things are, reducing the fuel source, just like the biggest size restriction factor on a lot of smartphones is the size of the battery. Though I've noticed some people that like the really big, bulky ones, the ones that are basically just small iPads, they can have a longer battery life. Instead of using high pressure gaseous oxygen, we switched to using liquid oxygen and a vaporizer. We can size this down significantly without any reduction Liquid's in more runtime. Dense, so Step yep. two is to reduce the fuel system. The triple mix butane we're currently using is already some of the best we can get. Standard cartridge sizes really limits our flexibility. How much is that going to cut your runtime, though? So, if though? we're to design a custom fuel tank, kind of like the one in our Mini Saber, that we can store exactly the amount of fuel we need to match our oxygen consumption, therefore sizing this down even further. And step three is to design a fixed flow control system. Our Kenobi flow controller is still pretty long, and by determining the precise okay. flow of each nozzle stage, we can theoretically size it down even further. And while we lose the ability to adjust our lightsaber flame, it means it will always have the longest flame possible in the smallest form factor. Now that might actually be better, just to have it, one, it's closer to the original design of a lightsaber, like you rarely see in the movies a lightsaber at, at half mass. So normally, normally I would be against sort of like a control mechanism, but a lightsaber really should be kind of an on or off thing. So that's, this is a pretty cool decision, I think. These three steps can take our six foot lightsaber pike and make it under two feet long, creating the world's first fully self-contained plasma-based lightsaber. Two feet's pretty good. Wow. That's no moon! I got this with my Han Solo blaster. Uh. You missed. Blasters are so clumsy. Lightsabers are a far more elegant weapon. Well, as soon as he said blaster, I knew they were going to reference that scene in the movie. Within Star Wars, I still find it funny that Obi-Wan uses a blaster to defeat General Grievous, even though he doesn't like it, despite that weapon saving his life. So maybe a Jedi should have something like that as a backup. Was that the, like the training thing in the original movie? Yeah, you could set paper on fire pretty well. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The classic- Hey, you can use it to light candles from far away too, apparently. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit of a silly weather. The other demonstration was a lot cooler. Home head. Oh, it's so bright. Yeah, is he wearing a welding thing? Like some for just goggles or something. Come on, guys! Don't you have anything more difficult for me? Oh, Bogdan, how does this tickle your fancy? That's more like it. There you go, buddy. Darth Vader's this. helmet on a stick. Oh yeah. That's a clone trooper, I think. Ooh, that scream! What's it made out of? Something highly flammable, apparently. Whew! And that just melt away. I mean, you see Darth Vader's helmet getting burnt and body getting burned at the end of Return of the Jedi, so I guess that's not out of character, but never see it melt. Really? I win. You guys think steel can stop me? No way. I'm wondering how we refuel this thing. It's actually pretty simple. We start with the oxygen, pop the cap off. We've got this quick connect from Swage Lock that just plugs right into there. And then we open up the oxygen. Just a hair. There we go. And then we wash this gauge. How much and oxygen is it saying? Tank. Purge the line. And then we disconnect our quick connect. And for the fuel, we've got this awesome sliding door mechanism. Hope does it have any kind of safety switch on there to prevent it from igniting while you're actively filling the thing with oxygen? It should, but maybe I missed that part. Sliding door opens. Full tank comes out. Change our O-ring. The tank goes in. And then your butane. It closes. And that's it. In under a minute, that's how you refuel a lightsaber. That's pretty good. Of course, you need to have your big oxygen tank with you on site, though. What's interesting is we keep big oxygen tanks 
at a nuclear plant in the control room in the event of a hazardous atmosphere because you want the control room to continue to be manned as often as you possibly can even in the event unless a fire gets so bad near the control room or, the, or an adjacent room but they have as their scba the same ones that firefighters used for control room operators to inhabit it if you lose if you lose a bit of oxygen so potentially now i'm just imagining control room operators armed with lightsabers as some sort of last line of defense yeah that would never happen but it's funny to think about things like that all right and for the finale we've got a chain and some explosions because we know you love explosions chain explosion okay Oh, it's got a lock on it. Uses a lockpick. Woo! That's pretty good. Though I think lockpicking lawyer can undo that faster than that. Ready? <laughs> Those little balloons. Woo! Heck yeah, I love this thing. It took us nearly seven years to get to this point, and probably close to half a million dollars in that time. That's cool. I love seeing like a design evolve over time and watching their their progress. This is this is really cool and a really impressive engineering feat. And I'm excited to see what they can come up with next. But we couldn't have done it without you guys, our viewers. The road that lies ahead is extremely dangerous, time consuming and expensive. Yeah, I'm really excited for what they can do next. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.